Sports Center with Jane Dan, presented by Tim Hortons. NBA draft went Thursday night, huge night for Canadians. Yes. Massive night. We're going to talk all about that in just a second, but first, it's Thursday night, and you know what that means. Oh yeah, Brent Butt is here. Yeah, he's, he's going to be talking about uh, he's going to be talking about his stand-up special and season two of Corner Gas Animated. Uh, but uh, his Rough Riders were playing on Thursday. That's right. And this game. Uh, it was very high scoring. It was very entertaining. It's the Red Blacks and Riders. Cody Fajardo in for Zach Caleros, who was placed on the six game injured list first quarter. Fajardo to Marcus Thigben. Fajardo throws a touchdown in his first career start. Riders open the scoring. There's Mr. Shoebeer. He's in attendance. Never drank a. Beer out of his shoes. Some sun. Late in the first. first Dominic Davis to the end zone for Dominic Rhymes. Davis's first passing touchdown this season. Red Blacks up 9 7 after one. Second quarter after Saskatchewan fumbled the punt. Next play. Davis fakes. Hits JC Boyu. And touchdown. Red Blacks added their two point conversion, so they're on top 17 10. Um, this is still going on in the first half. Another. A Red Blacks touchdown happened, and then William Powell, the former Red Black, takes it in for a touchdown, his second rushing touchdown this season. Late first half. Riders are down 14. They got a bit of time to work with. Going to take a shot. Evans got a step. Evans, touchdown! They and they use the that. Time to perfection. Chris Cuthbert on the call. Fajardo connects with Shaq Evans for his first career CFL touchdown. Riders within seven at the half. Second half totally different than the first. Fourth quarter, Ottawa up 11. Davis had three rushing touchdowns last week. Picks up huge yardage on the ground. Then gets nailed on the sidelines. That adds another 15 yards on the play. Ottawa got a field goal to go up 14. This is the CFL where you are never out of a game. Riders facing third and three in Ottawa territory. Jardo it's a wide open Kyron Moore huge first down Riders got a touchdown on the drive but missed the extra point Ottawa facing a second and nine Davis to Rhymes along the sidelines Saskatchewan challenge offensive pass interference ruling on the field stands Davis huge fantasy night scoring over 30 points Ottawa big field goal so they're up by two scores Riders got a touchdown and two-point conversion. They need the onside kick. How does that go? We have to check the percentages on these because I think it's about 5% success rate on onside kicks because the Red Blacks recover. They win their home opener. They're 2-0 to start this season. As they take a wild one, 44-41, and the Riders fall to 0-2. Mentioned they got close to records. The 55 combined first half points were the highest total in the CFL since 2013. And the Red Blacks tied a CFL record for the most two point conversions in a game with three. Also Thursday night, RJ Barrett's journey from top Canadian basketball prospect to top US college prospect to NBA player was completed with his selection in the NBA draft. But he wasn't the only Canadian taken in the first round, and it was his Duke teammate who went first overall. With the first pick in the 2019 NBA draft, the New Orleans Pelicans select Zion Williamson from Duke University. Great suit on Williamson, 6'7", 285 pounds, averaged over 22 points on 68% shooting, best percentage by a freshman in Division I history. A lock at number one to the Pellies. Hugging his mom, very emotional afterward. I don't even see him real, I just shook his hand. I dreamed about this since I was four. And for it to actually happen, I just thank God for it. Uh, John Morant went second to the Grizzlies, and yeah, there's R.J. Barrett wearing an Indochino suit, just like Dan and myself wear on every single show, with maple mamba embroidered with the Canadian flags. The Knicks were up third. 
with the third pick in the 2019 NBA Draft, the New York Knicks select R.J. Barrett from Toronto and Duke University. That's no Porzingis reaction from the draft, kids. <laughs> no crying today. This is who they wanted. Hey, you know if Spike's happy, the Knicks fan base is very happy. Barrett, the highest drafted Canadian since Andrew Wiggins went number one overall in 2014. And for the sixth time in the last seven years, a Canadian is drafted in the first round. Maple Mamba? Tell them what that means. It just means, um, you know, just representing Canada and, um, and my Kobe mentality, just that competitive mentality. So, you know, everything all together to get the Maple Mamba. I thought you getting a little emotional when you saw Dad start to walk up here. Uh, Dad, what does it mean to be in this moment? Because he told you when he was 12, this is the stage that he wanted to stand on. I'm excited for him. Uh, you know, your, your children make goals. And they go out and achieve them. You have to be proud. Very proud. I'm proud of you, son. Tell me what you want every Nick fan to know about your son. Uh, my son is going to give everything he has on the court. Um, he's a competitor. He plays to win all the time, every time. And while Barrett's name was called, here's the reaction from his friend and Duke teammate. I'm happy for him. That's my brother. He's ready. He's ready. And embracing afterward, sixth set of teammates to be drafted in the top three. Uh, Canadian basketball legend Steve Nash yeah! is Barrett's godfather, played with Rowan Barrett on the Canadian national team. His wife and son are yeah! slightly more muted in their reaction. Toronto's Nikhil Alexander-Walker selected Alexander at number 17. Walker, he will be NBA with Zion well, with the Pelicans guard. this fall. Yeah, handle, His cousin and current pass, Clipper, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, really was drafted ball. in the he's first round first. last year. Uh, he's got Who used to win most of the one-on-one -on -one games back at home in Canada? Uh, I did. I'm not gonna let him answer that one. I'll, I'll I'm not say, gonna. I'll we're say, not gonna let him answer that I'll one. I'll say him because it's his day. Yeah. It's his day. Brandon Clark, yeah, born in Vancouver, drafted 21st by OKC, part of a proposed trade. He'll play for the Memphis Grizzlies. And Burlington's Fiondu Cabin Gelly was picked 27th by the Nets. He'll join the Clippers through a trade. So four Canadians drafted in the first round. And Michigan's Iggy Brazdikas, another Canadian, went number 47 overall. Uh, he will end up playing for the Knicks, so he'll play alongside R.J. Barrett. It's just incredible to see all these Canadians going uh, in the NBA draft. It's very exciting. By the way, R.J. Barrett is the highest selection by the Knicks since they took Patrick Ewing first overall in 1985. Wow, incredible. And not only were the four Canadians picked the most ever in the first round. It was the most by any country other than the USA in the common draft era. And from his hometown in Brooklyn, New York, we bring in our friend Jack Armstrong. Jack, great to see a huge night for Canadian basketball. RJ Barrett obviously leads the way. What are the Knicks and Spike Lee getting with that third <laughs> overall selection? Well, they're getting a guy that, first of all, is mature, prepared, and a guy that I, I just love his overall ability to impact the game. Uh, he is a guy that, you know, obviously is a tremendous playmaker. Uh, he rebounds the ball well for his size. He's a really good scorer. Uh, shooting's got to get a little bit better, but that'll come in time. Uh, his mechanics are solid. And overall, just a guy that has a stage presence and a, and a level of confidence. He's prepared to play every night. You know, you play, you play college basketball at Duke. That prepares you. That's a lot of pressure. On a day-to-day -day basis, there's tons of expectations. Now, you play for the Knicks. The Knicks have not been very good for quite a while. The challenge here is there are unrealistic expectations. Now, he's not going to be the savior. They've got to do a good job managing uh, their available cap space and provide help for him. But it, no, it, there's no doubt that he is a positive step in the right direction and a really good pick for the Knicks. Total sense. And Thursday marked the first time that four Canadians were selected in the first round. At this point, the influx of Canadians into the NBA, is it even surprising to you or does it still surprise you each time it happens? Oh, it's not anymore. I, I just, you know, 
the basketball is, is has arrived in such a big way. You know, you had a signature moment last week when the Raptors winning, and now you have another signature moment literally a week later where you set a record for Canadians picked in the first round. Uh, and there's no doubt it's going to continue to get better and better. Think of all the young kids watching the Raptors win an NBA title this year and what it's going to be like in five, seven, eight, ten years from now. You know, we theoretically could have seven, eight players being picked in the first round here down the road. Uh, and, and you look at the fact that Canada is number two in the world in representation and NBA players behind the United States. Uh, now, I think the next step is success at a high level on the international stage. I so, can't wait. Oh. And, well, I can't wait. Hopefully, we're all, the three of us are covering that 2026 draft, 2027 around there. I hope we're all here. That's right. It wouldn't be a bad thing. The round of 16 looks like this. It begins Saturday. Uh, Canada last met Sweden in March, defeating them in a penalty shootout to earn bronze at the Algarve Cup. There it is. Canada looking to advance to the quarterfinals for the third time in tournament history. Coverage of this Sweden-Canada round of 16 matchup on Monday begins at 2 Eastern on CTV and TSN. Still to come, the Toronto Maple Leafs do not have a first-round pick in Friday's NHL draft. But that doesn't mean they won't be busy. The latest from the insiders next. It's Jay and Dan on TSN. You're watching Jay and Dan on TSN. Angels and Blue Jays 4-2 Toronto in the fourth inning when a special guest shows up at the Dome. 0-2 oh, on Calhoun. And looky here, Mr. Martinez. The NBA Finals MVP is in the house. And fans are just realizing it. And he's getting a standing O. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, he should get a standing O. Good for get some pretty good seats. Right next to the ball boy, who he chatted with for much of the game. In the fifth inning, Mike Trout at the plate. So he decides to uh, film it on his phone. And Trout will follow that up with a single to right center on the next pitch. A little later, oh, he's going to love this. A video tribute. We're smothering him. <laughs> Stop smothering him. Leave him alone. Pretty cool to see him stop uh, the bottom of the seventh left to a swarm of fans, and he had uh, he had a Jay's shop bag, so he stopped at the Jay's shop, picked up some souvenirs. Tenth inning, locked at five. Billy McKinney just called up for the minors. Two run shot to center, first career walk off home run. Jay's avoid the sweep. Beautiful way to end it. I love it. I'm not messing. I'm not messing around. Producer Tim is in a mood. Yeah, he's very angry. His uh, vacation starts tomorrow, and he is ornery. He needs that vacay. That was we a go. world record. We uh, we were a bit slow on the clock. I think we got it here in four seconds. We're less than 24 hours away from the NHL draft, and for the latest news and rumors heading in, James Duthie. With the insiders, Darren Drager, Pierre Lebrun, and Bob McKenzie. Well, the Toronto Maple Leafs certainly won't be center stage at the draft, barring a trade where they move up. They don't have a pick until 53rd, which would be Saturday morning. But they are in the middle of a ton of trade talk right now, and we have names and possibilities being discussed. Yeah, well, they have to clear cap space, as the whole world knows. And so those discussions are really starting to get more serious because we're at draft weekend. One team that has had a recent conversation with Toronto, we've talked about this possibility all year, was Carolina and the Leafs. And what was being proposed at the time is uh, Kasperi Kapanen and Connor Brown in a package that would involve Brett Pesci. The Hurricanes don't want to move Brett Pesci right now. They're trying to sign Justin Falk. I think they want to hang on to Pesci. So that's perhaps a conversation to be continued. But I think it tells you the fact that Captain was in that conversation. He's an unsigned RFA. Some of the different things that the Leafs are looking at right now. Well, it should shock no one that the Toronto Maple Leafs are an offer sheet target. And maybe Kasperi Kapanen is as juicy a target as any on the Toronto Maple Leafs 
Leafs roster. The Maple Leafs have to be aware of that, obviously, as they face the cap crunch. It was interesting to hear Kyle Dubas talk about that threat specific to Mitch Marner because that's been the narrative all along. And he said, well, maybe we take the first round, the four first round picks. Maybe we don't. So perhaps there's a message sent there to the Marner camp. Obviously, Darren Ferris, who represents Mitch Marner, is hoping to meet with Kyle Dubas here in Vancouver at some point in the next couple of days. There was also widespread belief that the Leafs would like to get rid of the contract of Patrick. Marlowe because of their cap situation but easier said than done well exactly Kyle Dubas said here there's a real good chance Patrick Marlowe will be on the Leafs roster at the beginning of next season which is kind of funny because Patrick Marlowe doesn't really want to be on the Leafs roster he wants to finish his career in San Jose and quite frankly the Leafs would like Patrick Marlowe to not be on the roster <laughs> because they need to free up the cap space that is 6.25 million for thereabouts is eating up. But the problem is it's a difficult deal to facilitate. There was a thought that maybe the Leafs could trade Patrick Marlowe to a third team. That team could buy him out. Patrick Marlowe could then sign a one-year low-value contract with the San Jose Sharks. The Leafs could free up some cap space. The team that buys him out would obviously get some sort of sweetener in some form of either dumping something to the Leafs or getting a player or, or process or something along the way but it's so hard to facilitate that right now the party line is Marlowe's coming back we'll see about that the Montreal Canadiens Mark Bergevin has made it really clear he'd like a left defenseman and looking towards the Philadelphia Flyers yeah among other teams what we do know that uh, he has checked in on Shane Goss's bear and listen the Flyers after acquiring Justin Braun and Matt Niskanen Chuck Fletcher's gotten a lot of calls on Shane Goss's bear because a lot of people think he's got too many D the reality is he's told teams I'm ready to keep him but yeah I'll listen Montreal among the teams it makes perfect sense they need a buck moving D on the left side we're in Vancouver the Canucks would love to make a big splash we know that general manager Jim Benning has been looking for a defenseman we know there's been also talk about what he may or may not do with the 10th overall pick in this year's draft there is a sense the Vancouver Canucks would like to move up try to get in the top five six or seven of this draft and try to make that splash we'll see if they can make that happen over the next little while well and speaking of trades Jeff Gorton and the New York Rangers could be first into that pool there's been ongoing speculation specific to a couple of key veterans and Jimmy VC and Chris Kreider I'm told that things are heating up on Kreider and we know that there are at least four maybe five teams in on Jimmy VC including the Buffalo Sabres so that could be a Friday deal yeah and finally Edmonton Oilers Ken Hall and a lot of work for him one of them is to find more goaltending and he has contacted Carolina about the rights to pending UFA Peter Morazic I think the answer was from Carolina no we're trying to sign Peter Morazic but I can tell you between the offer and the counter offer both sides aren't very close keep an eye on that one and some veteran players with big contracts in Vancouver Louis Erickson in Edmonton Milan Lucic in Calgary James Neal keep an eye on those guys to varying degrees all three of those clubs are looking at what their possibilities are of maybe unloading those contracts <laughs> and who knows maybe even for each other uh, two years ago 16 players were traded on draft day that's the high in the cap era we'll see if all this talk translates into action like that this year that was a strange cavernous room. <laughs> Alex Edler is staying in Vancouver. It's a two-year extension worth $6 million per year. The deal includes a full no-move clause for the 33-year-old, the all-time leader in points by a Canucks defenseman. He was set to become an unrestricted free agent on July the 1st. He's meant a lot to the organization. He believes in the direction we're going with the young players. He, he's excited to be you know, working with these young players and seeing where we're going. And I think that all kind of played into him wanting to be here. Uh, seventh all-time in games played among Canucks. He is the leader among Canucks defensemen. Jim needs a Red Bull. He, uh, we could use some sun, too. Lightning winger uh, Ryan Callahan, he's been put on the long-term IR after being diagnosed with a serious spinal issue. 34-year-old suffers from degenerative disc disease of the lumbar spine and has been advised to not return to the game of hockey. Callahan had seven goals, 10 assists in 52 games last season with the Bolts. And I'm of the belief if a doctor says don't play your sport again, you probably should follow the doctor's orders. Uh, he's scheduled to make just under $6 million next season, so the Lightning will get some cap relief. They had him. He was on TSN's trade bait board. He was the guy who came to uh, the Lightning in the Marte St. Louis deal. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Major League Baseball has given the Tampa Bay Rays permission to explore a plan to become a two-city team with early season games in Tampa before finishing in Montreal. One of the conditions 
was that both cities would need a new stadium. Ray's principal owner, Stu Sternberg, responded on Twitter saying, My priority remains the same. I am committed to keeping baseball in Tampa for generations to come. I believe this concept is worthy of serious exploration. However, the mayor of St. Petersburg, uh, he's not on board. Mayor Rick. Like that mayor. You come for our beaches, you gotta get through me. You gotta get through me. Mayor, what is it? Rick. Rick. Mayor Rick. Good beard. As we showed you earlier, the Knicks selected R.J. Barrett, third overall Canadian. Afterward, he spoke to another Canadian, and he's got a nice goatee. It's Jermaine Franklin. Well, RJ, congratulations on being drafted third overall. Congratulations on being a New York Nick. Uh, what does that mean to you? It means a lot, man. This is a this place I wanted to be, and uh, I'm very thankful that they embraced me just as much as I embraced them. And I'm just I'm just ready to go to work. You mentioned ready to go to work. It's the mecca mm -hmm. of basketball right here in New York City. And of course, the Knicks have had their difficulties recently. Uh, is there an extra pressure on you to help this franchise reach prominence again? No, no pressure at all. Uh, I never feel like there's pressure in basketball. Just, I think of it as a challenge. And um, like I've said before, I, I want to be the guy to, you know, help turn us around and bring us back to a championship. Now, I have to ask you about your jacket. If you wouldn't mind open that, opening that up it's again TSM, for us. Right? Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. You know, I have to, rep, I have to rep my country in here. I love you, Canada. How special is that to be able to um, do a little homage mm. to the nation where you were born and where you grew up? Very special. Canada is what built me. Um, Canada made me the man I am today. So any chance I get to, you know, give back or rep them, I, I always do. I'd be remiss not to ask you about the emotions that you were feeling mm -hmm. when you were called up and then you were there with your dad mm -hmm. being interviewed, kind of got overcome by emotion. What was that like and what was going through your mind? I just felt like I've been working hard, you know, my whole life and 19 years of, you know, build up just finally came out all at once and just, just so excited and so overwhelmed. And what now for R.J. Barrett? Well, right now I know where I'm going. I'm a Nick, so I'm just going to you know, get back in the gym and, and get ready to play for them. Thanks so much for your time, and again, congratulations. Thank you for having me. All right, and uh, you saw that, that beautiful uh, liner on the inside I've seen of it before. his jacket. Yeah, Dan's got the same liner. Look at that! Oh, yeah. Indochino. Yeah. They can do that for you, by the way. If you go to yeah. Indochino, you buy suits, they can do any liner you want. You can have all Canadian liners. Or no liner. Like, what's mine? Oh, it's this. It's kind of fancy. I think you have to have a liner. It's some sort. Fancy. Yeah, they are. It's very cool. It's like very uh, disco. This. I'm ready to hit the clubs. Studio 54 liner. <laughs> <laughs> Indochino. Nice suits. When we come back, if you'd like to know how to ruin a cup of beer and a shoe at the same time, the Jannies are for you. A cup of beer? I'll have a cup of beer. <laughs> That leads us to the Jannies, our favorite and least favorite plays from Thursday. There is Mr. Shoebeer. That's his name. Mr. Shoebeer. I think there's some guys on our crew that do this, too. Yeah, why not? It's not going to kill you. It's a fairly new shoe. Probably tastes better than a, a lot of beers I've tasted. Um, Indians Rangers, Jason Kipnis, ground ball up the middle. Elvis Andrews spins, throws him out. Look at the stretch. By Ronald Guzman. Rockies D backs tell Marte ready to come up to bat. <laughs> uh, this overexcited D backs fan just enjoyed some yerba mate. <laughs> Reds Brewers, Jesse Winkin. Hits it into the gap, goes all the way to the wall. And gets a third. What? Is he safe? No. Initially called out, but after review, he was called safe. Oh, yeah. Classic Winky. Winky. Yadier Molina at the dish. Look at the logo on his helmet. That's not good. The SCL, by the way, is off on Yadier's. What happened? But Jimmy said, no, no, no. Watch it. It's like a fridge magnet. Finger does this, and he drops the glove slightly. Phillies Nats, Cesar Hernandez. Ground ball up the middle. Trey Turner dives, fields, flips. Howie Kendrick gets Hernandez. 
It's a 6 4 3 double play. That yeah, was a 6 4 3 double play. And the getting is over. Nicely so turned by the Nets. Marlins Cardinals. I love these Jannies. We're just firing through them. Curtis Granderson. Fly ball to the left. Marcel Ozuna. Whoops. Oh, the whiff. After the inning is over, Ozuna then goes to the dugout and apologizes to his pitcher. The leadoff. Uh, here's what you do. You having a pool party? Because it's the summer. You put on the Jay and Dan podcast, and that's when it becomes a real party. Please film it and see what happens. Each other, this Highlight of the night. Rangers hosting Cleveland. You saw this. And Jason Kipnis grounds up the middle. Ellis Enders makes the great spin move. Ronald Guzman pulls off the splits to get the out at first. They rob Kipnis of a leadoff single here in the field. Great save. On a really terrific play on both ends. It's our You Blew It segment. Uh, we don't really have that many mistakes from this show, amazingly, but I did forget to mention another Canadian, the sixth Canadian taken Thursday night in the NBA draft, which is incredible. Uh, Mariel Shayok of Ottawa was drafted by the Sixers in the second round Thursday. So that's six Canadians went in the NBA draft. That's a record for uh, players drafted that aren't American. That's right. And then 59th overall, the Raptors had their first pick. They took Miami center Dewan Hernandez. So there you go. If the Raps lose Kawhi, they've got Dewan <laughs> Hernandez. And uh, that's it. Uh, again, just a reminder, Indochino, we wear the suits and so does R.J. Barrett. He's an Indochino guy. That's the suit he What else do you need? Oh. And uh, that was a big laugh. And we're excited because we're going to be at that Argos and Ticats game on Saturday. And then they are Kells. The whole show, the whole crew is going, except for producer Tim, who's taking vacation. He's that going to an exotic location, Brampton. Mm. He's tripped on the breakaway. Oh, no. I spilled something. Like, I'm a responsible employee. If Bell Media wonders, oh, does he spill things and just walk away? No, I clean that up real nicely, too. Okay. So I guess the Blue Jays now? That was drooly. Ooh, he's having some problems with his nails. I don't know what's going on with that finger. Look at it. It's like, it oh, looks like a toe. What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> I'm cleaning up some mess. <laughs> Doesn't sound good. Yeah, he was Boston. a goalie coach for Boston. Wait, no. We need those. Oh. You know, you, you always are worried we don't have Kleenex. I'm really supply. upset when I was throwing these out. Because once we're done that box, we got to dip into our own pockets. For more Kleenex. Bell Media said this was our last <laughs> box of Kleenex.